Hey everybody, welcome back to the 1RC YouTube channel. Tonight we're going to take a little bit closer look at our Herbie the Love Bug project. I talked about it in the last video when we were unboxing the new Radiolink RC6GS V3 transmitter. And I believe that'll be, uh, that'll be what we use to control this guy. Um, I loved the look of the Proline drag bug body. The minute it came out I knew exactly how I wanted to paint one up. Um, big fan of Herbie <laughs> myself. Um, this one is done a little bit fancier than Herbie ever would have been. Uh, it's going to be a little hard here in the shop, but it's pearl white paint with opaque white for the insides of the numbers. See the slight difference there. Um, use some spastics window tint to tint the headlights. A little detail that I like to add, and also to tint the windows. Um, just there's no interior in the car, so it just helps sell the look. Um, overall, I love this body. It's it's really thick and durable, but just the look and the proportions, I I love it. Um, got the car outfitted with Proline Hoosiers for the look. Um, I don't think there's a tire on the market that looks better than these. And those are the Proline slot mags. You got the short course style for the rear, and then the 2-2 buggy style for the front. Um, that stone gray, it, in their pictures I could have sworn this was had a little bit of a bronze tinge to it, but the stone gray looks completely different in real life. It may not even show up on camera, but they do look different in real life. Now in the previous video I had said that this was completely 3D printed, but that's technically not true. Um, unfortunately a chassis will not fit on my printer. I have the IndyCubic Viper and it's only a 245 millimeter build plate, so it's not quite going to fit a whole chassis. Um, there are some key components that are not 3D printed, such as the top deck here. Um, I tried. I really gave it a, a good effort, but the problem with trying to print the top deck is when it comes to the steering posts, kind of see them sticking down there, any side force whatsoever into those snaps them free. So short of machining, you know, machining them out and putting a brass tube or something in there, it just really wasn't worth it when that part cost seven bucks. Uh, beyond that though, flip it around here, the front bulkhead, the front drop arms, you can see we've got a seven millimeter drop on the arm there. That lets you run full suspension travel, full extension shocks without having to sacrifice any travel by limiting your up travel in the damper. Um, that is a unmodified Proline power stroke uh, for the front of a slash. So that should tell you just <laughs> how much of a difference those arms make. Um, got them on both sides. Got the bulkhead and got a front shock tower. Um, I don't run a bumper on this car just because it's a little easier to fit the body. Body sets, you know, fairly close to the front. I could, I could print a rustler bumper and fit it on there. I think that would be about as much as I would want to do. Um, we've got a stock rustler chassis, uh, just brand new off eBay. Really cheap and simple way to get a low center of gravity chassis for a slash two wheel drive and make it work. 3D printing the parts for this car, the things that aren't going to hurt anything are decorative things like, you know, the battery tie down, We've got an entire receiver box, 3D printed. Um, not sure why my antenna just fell out, but anywho, the uh, ESC plate, you know, that's an, another good place. Um, I just use standard PLA or silk PLA, and there doesn't really seem to be any negative effects in doing a PLA piece in an area like that. Um, all it's doing is giving a place for the ESC to live. <laughs> in the uh, in the rear, we do have the the center chassis extension that stretches the wheelbase. That is entirely 3D printed. Um, it is a three-piece bracket. You have the upper piece here between the shock tower and the chassis. There are two lower pieces, one that acts as a skid plate that goes underneath the transmission to the chassis, and then a sandwich plate. I'll try and get the tire out of the way here. 
you can see a sandwich plate here with uh i've got four lock nuts up there just for security but that actually acts as a sandwich plate to lock that piece together um, i will be using a piece identical to this printed in black on project what the front wheel drive because i don't know if you can see that there there we go let's see there we go let's get it zoomed in here <laughs> we have servo mounts on each side so we can mount the servo upside down and mount just a stampede um, servo saver on the bottom have steering from there instead of the rear facing plate that we have on that car now with the the bell crank and the full linkage it'll just simplify things a little bit um, we also have the rear shock tower printed um, this one would work for a rustler a stampede or slash it has the nubbin for the body mount of a bandit but it is not drilled through so you would have to drill your own bo uh, body clip hole as to how well a PLA shock tower is going to hold up I, I don't know I know that if you over tighten the shock mounts you will spin the standoff completely off of it so if that tells you how strong they are that, that should be a <laughs> that should be a warning um, again seven millimeter drop arms here in the rear to lower the car without sacrificing suspension travel. Let's see if we can get up. Sorry about the jump cut there. I think we're having a little bit of a technical issue with the internet or <laughs> something our camera here isn't exactly wanting to stay connected to our network. Um, going back to the uh, seven millimeter drop arms, here in the rear, you can kind of see how they, they come up there toward the hub, just lowers your ride height by seven millimeters while maintaining proper suspension geometry you can use a longer shock um, in the rear we also have the rear hubs 5 by 11 millimeter hubs 3d printed so there are quite a few pieces on this car that came off of a printer instead of out of a poly bag as to whether or not they're going to hold up that's a different story um, this car will not see much use uh, i'm going to be honest with you the the body holds a special place for me. Uh, my mom's first car was a Volkswagen Beetle. It was a 74 Super Beetle in lemon yellow. <laughs> Cute little car, um, but you know, having a Volkswagen like this, I love Herbie movies. It just, I don't want anything to happen to it. And uh, I, I just, I would feel bad smacking this thing into a curb and knocking it into a million pieces. That's not to say that I couldn't rebuild it. I mean, honestly, you're, you're looking at, you know, a couple of hours per part. You know, a front bulkhead takes four, six hours to print. A set of arms, six to eight hours to print for all four. Like, it's, it's not about the material, it's about the time. But I just, I don't want to hurt the car. Um, for elect, I mean, the car is going to be fast. For electronics, we've got a 120 amp Hobby Wing, uh, it's a 10BL 120 speed control you can just kind of see the fan peeking out there um got a 4600 kv four pole castle stuffed in the back um it's got an r4 fgm micro receiver to pair with the uh radio link transmitter i love it because it has the gyro i haven't really messed with the gyro too much in the camaro yet so i'm thinking it's gonna help um but that's about it with this car. I, I really, like I said, for, in my personal opinion, stay away from high stress areas. The shock towers, I thought they looked cool. They're probably not going to hold up to bashing or severe impacts. Parts like the upper deck with the steer with the uh, the steering bell crank posts, those snap off so easily. It takes no side force whatsoever to break those off. So for places like that, I, I don't think 3D printing is the right route. Um, obviously the chassis is too big, so we're not gonna be able to print that anyway to test, but if you were to twist this torsionally, you could snap that chassis very easily if it was 3D printed. Um, one bad landing down off the wheelie bar, this is the drag slash wheelie bar, just grabbed one off eBay, brand new in the package. If it came down off of the wheelie bar too hard, it's going to taco the chassis. 
So that's something that I don't, I don't think 3D printing is right for things like that. For prototyping those parts to be made out of a more durable material, maybe. Or if you 3D print nylon, that might be a much better choice. But for PLA, for your basic, you know, out of the box printer filaments that are available on Amazon now, you know, I use um, Monoprice. I love it, it prints great. It is not the strongest stuff in the world, but then again, it's PLA, it's not supposed to be. So, you know, switching your materials is going to help, but honestly, molded plastic is going to be so much stronger for these high stress areas. To be truthful, I have my concerns about these chassis extensions. I'm, I don't know how they're gonna hold up. I'm hoping they do well in Project What the Front Wheel Drive because that car gets driven a lot. So, only time will tell. Um, but that's, that's my opinion. That's, you know, take, take that with a grain of salt or take it as you, how you may. Um, if you have experience with 3d printed parts and manufacturing them and how they hold up for your setup, please let us know. Drop a comment down below and let us know how things work out for you. Um, uh, maybe, maybe your experience is, a, is quite a bit different, but for me, I think decorative parts are are the bread and butter for for 3D printing. Um, I do have some 3D printed parts on the, uh, to me, a Bl uh, Blitzer Beetle, only because I really didn't like how the ESC mounted. That's not a high stress part. It, it bolts to the chassis and just serves as a place to stick the ESC. No big deal. So we'll see how things pan out with this car. If we do take it out and get some running footage with it, I will definitely, definitely post that up here. Um, like I said, you know, Herbie's, Herbie's done and, uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, I've, I've been planning this since the drag bug was released and I've been a year and a half getting a hold of one. That's how popular this body's been and how hard it is to catch one in stock. So, but we do thank you for watching today. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Click the bell down below to be notified of any future videos. And like I said, any questions or comments, please drop them below. I do keep an eye on the comment section and I, I get an email alert anytime there is a comment or a question posted. And we, uh, again, just want to thank you for watching today. Have a great day.